Hi everyone. Welcome back to Chaos Makers Hobby House. Today is garlic planting day. I wanted to take you along for planting this year's garlic. This is the first year that I am not planting store-bought garlic. I am planting actual seed garlic. Inchelium garlic. I'll probably butcher that pretty bad. They are much, much larger. That's not even the biggest one. I mean, those are some pretty good sized cloves in there. Now before I get started, I just kind of want to go over the basics uh, in case you haven't planted garlic before, if you're new to the channel and maybe haven't seen past videos where I planted garlic. Uh, there are two primary types of garlic. There are hard neck and soft neck. I plant soft neck here. And what that means is at the top of your garlic, this kind of bit that pokes out in the middle of the cloves is soft. It's not a really hard stem. Hard neck garlic, this stem, you wouldn't be able to bend it. You wouldn't be able to snap it in half. It attaches to the root base, goes all the way up through the cloves and sticks out the top. And it is, it is a branch essentially. It's, it's very, very hard. Hence hard neck. Hard neck is better suited for areas that get colder, that, that the ground freezes. I'm in South Carolina, zone 8B. It is November 2nd and 85 degrees out, so that's not, that's not really a problem I face. So we plant soft neck. Much better for cooler or warmer climates. And like I said, I am planting actual seed garlic, not just grocery store bought garlic, for the first time this year. So there is nothing wrong with buying grocery store garlic and planting that. The only difference really is one, you don't really know the variety you're getting, and two, they have a ten tendency to produce smaller cloves, smaller bulbs overall. But you can still grow them no problem. If you do go the store-bought garlic route, a few things to look out for. You're going to want to get bulbs that were produced in the country that you reside in. So for me, I would need something produced in the United States. because. At least for the United States, import laws uh, in order to prevent any kind of uh, pathogens or insects coming into the country, they have to cut off the roots uh, when they come from outside of the country. Uh, make sure there's no soil-borne diseases or pests that, that hitch a ride in. Well, without those roots, your garlic's not going to grow. So look for bulbs that still have the roots, that fuzzy bit at the end. If it hasn't been cut off, it was probably produced where you reside, in the country you reside. And also try to get organic garlic because garlic is often sprayed with a sprout inhibitor that'll prevent it from sprouting. It's, it's great for storage. And that's what they wanna do when they bring it into the supermarket. They want to store it for potentially a long period of time. So they don't want it to sprout. So you don't want anything sprayed with sprout inhibitors. And the best way to do that is to try to get organic it's no guarantee it hasn't been sprayed with sprout inhibitors, but it's a much lower chance that it has been. I've always had great success planting supermarket garlic, just following those rules. I haven't had any issues getting them to sprout. Uh, and I'll, I'll put a little picture up here, uh, but they always did produce smaller heads and smaller cloves. It's fine, instead of one clove of garlic when I'm cooking, I'll use three. But I wanted to try something new, something I've never done before. So I did go ahead and get seed garlic this year, basically the garlic that is designed to be grown from a nursery. I got mine from Baker Creek Seeds. Seed garlic does tend to be a bit on the pricey side, but it's kind of one of those buy once, cry once kind of deals. Because if you grow your own and you grow enough of your own to get you through an entire season after they're harvested, if you have leftovers, you can just use those for planting the next season. So it may take a year or two to pay, pay for themselves, but they will pay for themselves. And I'm so curious to see what kind of size I'm going to get out of them this year. And I was actually on time to order them. Usually I forget. And by the time I remember, I need to get garlic in the ground right away. So I can't wait for shipping or they're all sold out. So with that being said, let's go through how, uh, how to get your garlic ready for planting and your bed. Okay, so a little change in scenery. Needed some place to put you guys um, so I could have both hands. That bed right there is the one the garlic's gonna go into. You want them to get full sun 
These will be planted four to six weeks before your last frost. My last frost is the end of November. Today's November 2nd, so right on track. Garlic does grow through the winter. It grows all the way through the winter to be harvested early summer next year. So it takes nine months for garlic to grow, nine months in the ground. So make sure you put it someplace that isn't going to interfere with the crops you plan to grow in the spring or summer because they're already going to be well established before your garlic is ready to harvest. But to prep your garlic, it's very, very simple. So have all the different little cloves. All you do is separate the cloves. Try to keep as much of the paper on it as you possibly can. Keep it as intact as you possibly can. Other than that, it's all you do. You just separate all the cloves from the head and it is best to plant the largest of the cloves. So if you have kind of a puny one, like here's, here's a good example. That's kind of, kind of a tiny one. Rule of thumb is small clove equals small headed garlic. So if you want big heads of garlic, plant the biggest cloves. And you can certainly plant this. This will turn into a clove of garlic. It just won't be your biggest one. I'm probably gonna plant it unless I run out of room. If I run out of room, then I'm gonna take this inside and eat it. There you go, that's a super tiny one. So that probably won't produce a very big head. So I'm gonna plant the biggest ones first until I run out of room and any of the small ones left over, they'll go towards dinner. So I've got some garlic to separate. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I separated out my garlic into definitely good for planting, back up for planting if I still have room left over based on the size, and then the cloves that really have no chance of growing. They were the inner bits that are real skinny. Some of them might grow something, but other ones, hmm, that's not going to turn into anything. And these are the leftover papers with the roots. Now to prep the bed, I'm just going to top it with some compost. I cleaned out my compost bin and look at all this black gold I got. Sadly, it's probably not going to be enough for the entire garden bed winterizing, but that's a good start. Okay, now that that bed is all topped with compost, gonna start spacing out my garlic. We're gonna put them four to six inches apart, spaced four to six inches, about two to four inches deep on average, depending on how cold your area is. If your ground freezes, go a little bit deeper. If you have really soggy soil, go a little shallower. For me, in the south, I plant about two inches deep. With the flat side down, that's where the roots are gonna come out, and the pointy side up. Okay, let me get my spacing planned out here real quick. All right, that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna put one single clove in each hole because every single clove turns into one head of garlic. I did end up using about half of the smaller cloves that were kind of the backup cloves from about here over uh, just because I ran out of the super big ones, but that is not a problem. They will still grow into beautiful, delicious garlic. So let me get these covered up and then put mulch on top so the soil doesn't dry out. and that garlic is all tucked in for the next nine months. I just used for mulch some leaves that had fallen from the trees and some leftover wood chips that I had. 
It'll keep the soil from drying out as fast and becoming hydrophobic and will also help suppress weeds. Now I'm just gonna give it a good watering. And I wouldn't be surprised if I start seeing these sprout up within the next week. I feel like I wore the right shirt today. In case you weren't aware, I have a merch store now and it's linked in the description below. Just added some new products and designs last night. So if you want to support the channel, I would love if you went to check it out. And I'm always open to design ideas and would love to know what products you'd like to see in the store. And well, that's about it. You just kind of let it do its thing for the next nine months. And the great thing about garlic being grown through the winter, the soil doesn't dry out nearly as fast as it does in the summer. So watering is not gonna be a crazy ordeal that you have to keep on top of. I've never fertilized after planting, just topping it with a good broken down compost that seems to do the trick for me. If you're at all concerned about your soil health, you could always take uh, soil samples and have them tested. They make these great kits online um, that you can order. I, I think I have them li linked in my Amazon storefront um, and that link is in the description below as well. So if you wanna take a look, but otherwise, they're such a low maintenance, easy thing to grow. I will say, come spring when they really start putting on growth, because you will see growth a little bit through the winter, but it'll be very slow. Uh, they will shoot out what are called scapes. Now, hard neck and soft neck garlic have different scapes, but basically they're the same thing. They just look a little bit different. It's, it's like a center stalk that pokes out of the center of the leaves. And the leaves kind of look like corn the way they cascade. Uh, and when that stalk pops up, it'll be very clear that it's different from the leaves around it. You want to clip that off because that is the plant trying to flower. And if you let it flower, it's going to send all its energy into flowering and not into bulb production. So you will either get no bulb or a very tiny one. Well, I think that'll do it for planting garlic. Uh, let me know if you've tried this variety before. What was it called again? Inchellium garlic. Let me know what you think of it. I've never tried that variety before, but I've never actually like purposely chose a variety to plant uh, because I always just grabbed whatever they had in the store, in the supermarket. But let me know what you think of that variety. Do you have a favorite variety that would do well in hot climate like South Carolina, Zone 8B? Because I am new to all the different varieties and man, were there a lot to choose from. So I would love to hear your suggestions about your favorite variety that would do well here uh, for future years to come. I am quite warm and still have a bunch of things to get done. So thank you for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. I will be happy to answer whatever I can or learn with you. I'll see you next time. Bye.